So you're at a customer's house and you're cleaning and the customer appears out of nowhere with a can of SpotShot Instant Carpet Stain Remover and they ask if you can clean out a couple of stains out of their carpet. And you're like, ah, because you don't know how to use it. <laughs> All righty, we're gonna talk about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today we're gonna do a product review on SpotShot because lots of house cleaners get asked lots of questions about cleaning products that they're unfamiliar with. Now this is a product that many people have under their kitchen sink or under their bathroom sink and they use it to remove spots out of their floors. So if you don't know how to use it, today's the day you're going to learn. All right, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the company behind it. Back in 1983, the very first bottle of SpotShot Instant Carpet Stain Remover was released to the market. All the way forward, to 1987, a few years later, Family Circle said it was one of America's top 10 products. I know, right? In 1989, Walmart picked up the brand and started carrying it in all of their stores nationwide. In 1992, it hit the Kmart stores. 95, it hit the Target stores. 1998, it was picked up by Sam's Clubs nationwide. So this product is readily available pretty much anywhere. Retails for about two and a half to three dollars a can. I will put links in the show notes to it in case you want to order it from Amazon Prime, but it's readily available everywhere. In 2002, the SpotShot Instant Carpet Stain Remover got married, and it married WD-40 Company Inc. and became part of their family of brands. Woo now everybody knows WD-40 and they know what it's capable of, right? It's a fantastic product that four out of five Americans have a bottle of that in their house. All right, so what happened in 2008, they reformulated the product with the trigger spray version. Now the trigger spray version is environmentally friendly and it is non-toxic and it is safe for pets. Okay, what's cool about this is they took the product that was working really well and they created a version for pets. So if you have pets, pet stains, pet odors, this removes and eliminates a lot of that. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is the aerosol version. This is not the spray version because they're two separate products but this is the product that is most popular that most people have under their bathroom sinks or under their kitchen sink. So I want you to know how this one works. For the benefit of our podcast listeners, I've purchased a couple of carpet runners. One is a plush carpet. The other is a Berber carpet. Neither of them have patterns on them and they're light colored. Now to clean up the stains we're going to install, we have some spot shot instant carpet stain remover, a white roll of paper towels, and some white cotton terry cloths that we may wet. Now the household culprits we're going to use today are coffee, pomegranate juice, cranberry juice, blueberry juice, and my favorite, a spinach smoothie. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh no, all of those are gonna leave disastrous carpet stains. Yes, that's correct. That's why we've chosen these for today's experiment. Now I've unrolled the carpets and I've taken off the labels that I created, labeling each of the different types of juices, and I've stuck them on the carpets in strategic positioning so that we will be able to identify the spots once we pour the juices on the carpet, and then also we will be able to identify where the stains were after we remove the stains. This is assuming that the stains are all going to come out. <laughs> Alrighty. And then our work smart, not hard tools. I've taken some paper towels and I've folded them up into squares that we will be using to blot out the colored juices that I'm about to pour into the carpet. We're gonna start with spinach juice on the Berber carpet. Then we're going to pour on some blueberry juice on the Berber carpet. These will be our most difficult types of stains to remove on the most difficult type of carpet. Then we'll pour some cranberry juice on the plush carpet. And then we will use some pomegranate juice that we'll also pour on the plush carpet. And then we'll pour coffee on the plush carpet as well. Now, as is true with removing any stains, you wanna remove the stains, if at all possible, when they're fresh, because that's when you're gonna get the most amount of benefit from your cleaning supplies. Now, before you put any cleaning chemicals on there whatsoever, you wanna blot up as much of the stain as possible before you put chemicals on there. So we're using white paper towels and we're just blotting up what we've just poured onto the carpet. Now, you can see already that this has seeped into the carpet some of it is already a different color than what we poured on the carpet to begin with. And so as you watch us dab this up, I'm going to flip the carpets over and we're going to be able to see if it sunk through the carpet runners that we're using as this experiment. All right, now look, it went all the way through and it hit the carpet below. 
Now, for those of you that can't see what we're doing, I do have a carpet underneath, which is a, a mat that's catching any of the extra stains so that we don't stain the hardwood floor that we're actually on top of. So if you try this at home, please take extra precautions so that you don't ruin any furniture or granite countertops or hardwood floors or any of these things. All right, now using the hot shot spray, we're gonna go ahead and spray the foam on top of the stains that we've just dabbed up. And we're gonna let this set for five minutes. The dwell time on the back label of the container says we're gonna get the most benefit from this if we let it set for five minutes. So I have a clock here and we're setting the timer for five minutes. And in the process, I'm gonna fold up some more paper towel squares so that we can dab up the cleaning chemical that we just put on top of our stains. All right, now it's been five minutes and we're gonna go ahead and start dabbing up the stains that we've created. Now, in the event that it doesn't come up, I do have a wet white terry cloth that I'm gonna to use to also dab up some of the stain that we've created, especially coming from the spinach smoothie because it had bananas and other things that were in there. All right, now, while you watch me as I try to dab this up, Please pay attention to the fact that if it doesn't come up immediately, we may try the process again. On the back of the can, it says try steps two and three, which are the spray and the dabbing part, again and again until you get all the stains up. So this is expected if you have a very difficult stain. And like I say, right now we're working on the two most difficult types of stains that you're gonna remove from the most difficult type of carpet. So now we're spraying a little bit more on. We're gonna leave that for a few more minutes. And while we do that, I'm gonna cover some of the information on the safety data sheet. All right, now let's talk about the safety data sheet, a little bit about what it's made of and how to be safe when using it. All right, we just talked about the company behind it. Now let's talk about the hazards. All right, the hazards are this is a flammable gas, okay? This is contents under pressure. It's an aerosol can. Now this is true with all aerosol cans. You don't wanna incinerate them. You don't wanna puncture them. You wanna keep them out of direct sunlight. You wanna store them in a cool, dry place all of those things. All right, same is true with the spot shot. All right, what is inside? Well, it is a liquid petroleum gas. It also has 2-butoxyethanol, which is an organic compound from the family of glycol ethers. You'll find it most in solvents and stain removers and things that lift stains. All right, the exact percentages of those is a trade secret. We don't know exactly how much of that is in here. For the first aid measures, if you get it in your eyes, you wanna rinse your eyes with water. If you get it on your skin, you wanna wash your hands with soap and water. If you inhale it and the fumes bother you, go to fresh air. All right, the fire safety. This is contents under pressure. It is a flammable aerosol. It will catch fire. So you do not wanna use this at all around an open flame. You do not wanna smoke around this. You do not wanna have this near heat. So make sure that you treat this with respect. All right, accidental spills and release. If for any reason while you're using this product, it should get punctured, put your hand over the puncture wound, take it to a bucket, take the bucket outside where it's well ventilated, put it inside the bucket and release your hand so that the pressure can dissipate. As it dissipates, all the spot shot is gonna fly all over the inside of the bucket. <laughs> and then once the pressure has dissipated, then you can clean out the inside of the bucket. All right, we talked about the handling and storage and storing it in a cool, dry place. Also, you wanna keep it out of the reach of children and you wanna keep it in a well-ventilated area. All right, and the exposure controls. If you're gonna be cleaning all of the stains in your house at one time, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and use your personal protective equipment, which is your eye protection, your face protection, and your hand gloves. But if you're just doing a spot or two, it's gonna be a brief interaction. You can go ahead and spray those, dab those up, and you're done. All right, the physical and chemical properties. When you spray this on your carpet, it's gonna come out as a white foam and it's going to smell like glycol ether. All right, the stability and reactivity. It is stable under all conditions and it doesn't react to things under most conditions unless you mix it with something else. So do not mix it with anything else. You only get one chemical at a time, right? That's your working smart, not hard rule of thumb for cleaning solutions, one solution at a time. All right, the toxicological information. Excessive inhalation can cause a headache, drowsiness, nausea, and a lack of coordination. Now, none of the components that are listed are listed as a carcinogen, but there are chronic effects associated with 2-butoxyethanol, such as blood, liver, and kidney damage. So you do wanna show chemical respect when you use this product, and you wanna follow all of the instructions and all of the labels that are printed right on the very back of the can, okay? So you've gotta treat this product 
As is true with all aerosol sprays, you must treat them with the utmost chemical respect. The ecological information, bioaccumulation is not expected based on the assessment of the ingredients. And the disposal considerations, because it's an aerosol container, you don't want it to be punctured or compacted in any home trash compactor. And when you do dispose of it, you want to do it in accordance with federal, state, and local regulations. All right, and the transport information. Because it's a flammable aerosol, we do not want to ship this by air. We only want to ship this by ground. So if you're ordering it online, give yourself an extra day or two for it to arrive. All right, and the regulatory information. This product is listed on the Sara Title III for 2-butoxyethanol as a glycol ether compound. Now, the effects and exposure to any hazardous substance depend on the dose, the duration, how you're exposed, personal traits and habits, and whether other chemicals are present. All right, and if for any reason you're unsure when using this product, you can always refer to the back label of the can or the jar. Any company worth its salt is going to have a phone number where there's a 24-hour operator that's standing by that can answer your questions in case you're in a pinch. So don't ever feel like you're stranded on the chemical island and you don't know what to do. All right, now you're informed. Now checking back in with our carpet project, you'll see that it did not come out on the first try. It took several attempts of spraying and dabbing, but after 12 hours of drying, the spot shot did an amazing job and you can almost not tell that there was ever a stain there. Now you just watched me intentionally pour some dark colored juices into the carpet so that I could turn around and extract them from the carpet with Spot Shot Instant Carpet Stain Remover. Now, I don't know if your stains are intentional or accidental, and it doesn't really matter either way. I hope that if you have stains, Spot Shot Instant Carpet Stain Remover is a go-to product that you're now comfortable using because now you know how to use it. Alrighty, I wanna start a conversation in the notes below. Tell me, do you like it? Do you love it? Have you used it? And if you found this helpful, please pass it on to a friend. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.